Welcome back, Poker Vlog number 14. In today's episode, we're playing at Matrix Casino, four minutes away from Bay 101. The reasoning we're playing at this casino now is because Bay 101 has permanently, indefinitely banned me because I was vlogging without pre-authorization and showing people's faces in one third of my videos. Now, I wanna say a few things. They said they would consider reevaluating, unbanning me in 90 days. Even if they lift the ban, I have no plans of ever playing back at Bay 01. So good for you poker pros and I guess maybe bad for you guys because maybe I am a fish after all, who knows. But I want to say a few things. I think floor person Joshua, I appreciate you. You accelerated my banning process, but you are very kind and you just handled everything professionally. I think the other floor persons were not so professional. I think floor person Brian shouldn't have been involved in this. You, you're, you've been a floor person for 15 years or whatever, according to your LinkedIn. And you're kind of getting involved in stuff that you shouldn't be involved with. This, you follow my YouTube channel. It's not really any of your business to tell civilians what I do. I think you're, I think you're going out of your scope. And uh, yeah, I'll talk about this stuff in another video. Let's let's save it for another day. Anyways, Ace Four of Clubs is 100% open and is a 3%. That I means a 50% three bet. The whole field calls my 35, pot is $150, so flop, ace, queen, four, rainbow, beautiful, we flop the nuts, and the small blind donk leads out $55. Pot now is $210, and now you're caught up to the action, and it's on big blind with a $300 stack. We have to start asking ourselves, what does small blind have that donk leads out on the flop? Well, he's going to be donk leading out hands like ace jack, ace 10. He's never going to have ace king because he would have three bet pre-flop of ace king and he certainly doesn't have a hand like ace queen or pocket fours because those are hands that are just so easy to check raise if you have pocket fours you assume someone's gonna have an ace and you're gonna check raise if you have ace queen you want to check because you basically block up top two it's hard to get bets and you once again want to probably want to check raise big blind calls though big blind's gonna have a lot of jack king jack 10 he's gonna have more gutters he's gonna have more draws maybe even occasionally three five two three he's also gonna have hands like pocket fours and ace queen he definitely had a hand, had a hand like ace queen that wouldn't three bet pre-flop of his $300 stack and it makes sense to flat the flop you could also have, have pocket fours that would definitely smooth play here he's so short stack he can definitely get the money in any time we're gonna raise up $230 and uh as quickly as we raise up $230 small blind now is gonna call to $230 bringing the pot to $670 and now actually it's back to big blind whether or not big blind calls is almost irrelevant because we already put in so much money even big blind jams in the rest of the stack we basically have to call off even he has a hand like ace queen I mean, it was super duper suck, but it is what it is. Uh, I guess more better than not, he folds and we go heads up $670 and turn now as a king of spade. We have about one SPR left. Uh, wow, I actually have 670 into 670. What are the odds of that? Small blind now donk bets half pot for $300 into 670 on a king of spade turn. That is weird uh let's think about his hands he doesn't have ace king because ace king once again went three bet pre-flop uh even if he didn't three bet pre-flop he certainly wouldn't donkly flop and then call and then donkly keep in mind this guy just double donk bet i've never seen double donk bet in my life donk bet one third pot into open field and then donk bet heads up on the turn never seen it before love to see it I think I especially love to see it because my hand is pretty strong against his overall range that he's repping like three hands. He doesn't have ace king. He doesn't have queen king. He could have jack 10 suited occasionally that just randomly bet flop and then just like called the big raise on the flop and then it's like, oh, bingo, and then just starts donking turn. I assume generally players would just check raise the turn jack 10 here too. So even if he has jack 10, this must be a lower frequency line because he I assume he would still check raise the turn jack 10. Which means that he just has ace jack ace 10 and because he has ace jack ace 10 i'm gonna jam the rest of my stack in for about right under 670 dollars i'm all in thank god he didn't snap call me i was waiting for that decision like you know give it a few seconds if he snap calls me i'm probably screwed now let's think about hands i'm still screwed to that i can get value owned it's just basically his queen occasionally but why would he donk lead out ace queen as mentioned so he basically always has ace jack ace 10 here i think and now it's just a matter of i hope he has ace jack ace 10 <laughs> and he doesn't have ace queen and he thinks i have ace king or jack 10 that would be so stupid but possible because he's a small blind he makes the call 
for $670. Pot now is $2,010 out there. Very interesting. He shows Ace-10. Beautiful. And I'm quickly glancing over, as you can see, my chin and uh, scoopy doop. 2K pot. On to the next hand. We got Pocket Queens. Pot is $25 out there. I, I assume someone opened for $25? Yes! Older Asian gentleman raises it up to 25 And I'm going to raise relatively small to essentially a min click to $60. Uh, I think this sizing is totally fine. He opened kind of big. Uh, I mean, 25 is pretty normal in a 2-5 game, but I just felt like downsizing the 3-bet the today for whatever reason. Just felt like it. Did it. Pot now is $120, and it's a beautiful flop. Ace, King, Jack. Yeah, 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 yeah. He checks and... Um, Basically, check back. He's going to have a lot of ace X here. Ooh, bingo. This is our day. $120 out there. We're going to go half pot. I think we can go... Uh, I think we can go a little bit bigger, too. Uh, half pot's fine, but I think we can definitely go a little bit bigger. Uh, he's going to make the fold, unfortunately, to the next hand. Pocket nines. We're in early position, I guess. Yeah, it looks like the blinds is to my right. You can kind of see that $5 chip. I'm going to raise it up for $15. Guy of headphones on uh, makes the call for 15 if I recall. He was relatively short stack. He might not even have $400 if I recall correctly. Uh, he's going to make the call and uh, that's cool, I guess. Hoping for a 9. It doesn't really matter as long as no one 3 bets me. Gets another call and gets another call. Everyone calls. Four ways to flop. $60 out there. And uh, we're going to take this time to say if you like what you see, what you hear so far, please be sure to give me a subscribe so you can follow along when I release weekly content, occasionally weekly. Sometimes twice a week, sometimes once a week. Who knows? And sometimes none for two weeks. Pot is $60 out there. Jack 65 Rainbow is going to go check and check to me. And now it's just a matter of what do we do? Do we check back or do we bet very, very, very small? Uh, there's going to be a lot of Jack X out there, so I think you can definitely check this back at a very, 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 very high frequency, but I'm going to bet $15. Um, I mean, two people check to me and they can't, I mean, they, they might think I just see bet a lot, but I'm not see betting a lot. So I don't know. I just, I just bet $15. Flop now. I mean, turn now is a four of spades. Terrible bringing the pot to $105 and it checks through because, you know, seven, eight is a lot of people's ranges. River is pretty safe. Queen of Clubs. It checks, and I'm going to check back. Just hoping to take this down showdown. And then now this guy bets $60. So a little bit over half pot, I think. And it's a little bit gross because he's going to have Jack X a lot. And uh, that's just really it. He never has Queen X, at least, I think. So, like, there's no Queen X that can call flop. So I just basically lose to Jack X, and then I beat all the bluffs. And he shows me queen seven. I don't know how he has queen seven. That's super weird. He called flop for fifteen dollars. Even though I bet small, like one fourth pot. How can you call of queen seven with people acting behind you? We got pocket queens in the next hand. We're gonna raise it up to thirty five dollars as a ten dollars straddle. Pretty good spot. The guy is relatively short stack, especially when he straddles. So pretty easy to stack him off. I don't think you even need to go thirty five. Uh, this table has another $250 short stack. I think I could definitely not go 35. There's so many short stacks in this game. That's the one thing I noticed about Matrix over Bay 101, based on the sample size of one, is that this casino stacks are much more shallow. There's no real deep stacks that I've seen on my table, at least. I haven't seen the other tables. And I also know for a fact that uh, I waited like over one hour to get on this table. Uh, I was originally supposed to play 7 hours at, at Bay 101, but then they banned my ass, so that felt kind of bad. Anyways, the flop is $105 out there, and the board is going to be Ace Ace 4. Great. Uh, big Blind's going to check, and then the other guy's going to check, and then it's going to be action on me, and it's whether or not we want to bet a hand like $20. Try to get small value against like low pocket pairs, medium pocket pairs, and then just freeze the action. Uh, from, uh, you know, getting bluffed out. Also, if they have an ace, then, you know, they're, they're probably going to check at least a turn. And then we can reevaluate waiver. But this guy now uh, leads the turn for over pot for $120. And uh, he only has, like, maybe $100, $150 behind, if I recall correctly. He's very, very, very short stack. I, don't, I, I think it might have been a grandma, to be honest. I don't know if it was him or her. But anyways, uh, I'm going to fold because, uh, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that. 
On to the next hand, we got pocket sevens. This is a day of pocket pairs. We're gonna raise, oh, we're not gonna raise, we're gonna call the 25 because EP raised it up to 25. He's relatively short stack, but to my left, it's got a thousand dollars, I think. And uh, we're gonna hope to hit a set of sevens. Or, you know, maybe a deuce, deuce, deuce board. Flop is 873, bingo. $75 out there, hoping for EP to see bet big. Uh, so he has a hand like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. But unfortunately, you got the bad news, EP does check. And now we're gonna have to, uh, I mean, occasionally we can check trap. I'll let some people catch up, but I don't think there's a whole lot reason to because I want to start targeting weak ace X from the guy to my left. He certainly would have those and he does make the call for $30 bringing the pot to $135 EP will now fold to the turn is an eight of hearts pretty good turn uh, pretty irrelevant as well. So I don't really like my sizing that much. I think you should definitely just go big here like maybe like 110 120 uh, and just really target down those ace 10 ace jack maybe occasionally ace queen. But I go with something small, half pot is fine, I guess. I, I don't see a reason to half pot, I don't really like it, but it is what it is and that's what I do. And he's gonna make the fold. If you like what you see, what you hear, please be sure to subscribe and I will guys see you in the coming week. Maybe in the next two weeks, I will release another episode. Bye.